look, it could be 2,800 or it could be 4,000 or 6,000. I believe that this year, as they have always done, the Federal Reserve will cave in. The last time they bought the kind of quantity of gold they're buying now is in the late 50s and 60s, which preceded the 1971 closure of the gold window in America in August 71. Right. And uh, following that, the gold price went ballistic. So I would take this as an important signal. Mark Faber is the editor and publisher of the Gloom, Boom and Doom Report and the director of Mark Faber Limited, an investment advisor and fund manager. Faber, a 77-year-old Swiss investor based in Thailand, has given his outlook on gold, real estate and the stock market amidst the increasing macro and economic uncertainties in the United States and the overall global economy. According to Faber, real household inflation is still well above 6%, regardless of the official figure presented by the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the Federal Reserve. The Swiss investor explains that the Federal Reserve will keep raising rates to pay for the mistakes of the past two decades. Not only did they keep rates at an unrealistically low level, but they also manufactured hundreds of billions out of thin air to prop up the markets. Now, regional banks are failing, and inflation is still not under control. Faber says it's only a matter of time before the Fed has to return to the printers and save the economy by weakening it further. When this happens, the renowned investment advisor is convinced that investors will see the need to flock en masse to precious metals like gold, silver, and platinum. Faber, who confirms that gold prices are being heavily manipulated to stay down, adds that this might be the year the manipulation breaks and prices move strongly. The 77-year-old recently sat down for a discussion with the Wall Street Silver YouTube channel, where he discussed everything from gold prices to central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, and the New World Order. We will now bring you clips from the highly insightful discussion. Please, take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Also, ensure you drop your comments and observations about Faber's interview in the comment section below. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm and immensely contributes to the channel's growth. Thanks, and enjoy the video. The Fed is now in a very difficult situation because you look at the 10 years Treasury bond yield, it's say 3.5% plus minus. And inflation is 6%. And there's a stress in the financial system, certainly with regional banks. So what should the Fed do? In theory, the Fed should continue to increase interest rates until they are significantly above the rate of inflation. Mm -hmm. But if they do that, the system collapses. So it's <laughs> not a very desirable option. I don't know what Powell will do. My sense is uh, he will move slowly. But if problems occur, then they'll flood the system again with liquidity. It's a business for them. It's a very easy way to print money. Mm. A cryptocurrency controlled by the government is a present from heaven to essentially control uh, transactions, your transaction, my transactions, and so forth. Uh, I don't think it will take off because we will go back to barter systems or in a village we can introduce our own money. Mm -hmm. It will be counterfeited, but we can introduce our own money. Uh, People, the the central government will then step in and probably prohibit that. But uh, you know, I don't think people want to or will tolerate to be monitored about everything they do. It's right. a, if I go out at night, I pay cash, so nobody knows anything. Depends philosophically what you believe. I. I believe uh, strongly that we are moving into a totalitarian state. Now, I don't know whether the future dictator or ruler or king or emperor or what not, or president of the World Economic Forum, <laughs> whether he's a socialist, communist, or a fascist, but it won't matter very much in character he will be an authoritarian, uh, uneducated clown 
uh, that belongs to the bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a, in former times, we had autocratic regimes on the kings and the feudals and the rulers. Uh, and now we have the same under the bureaucrats, except the bureaucrats is the worst kind of mob. They are uneducated. Uh, they're not legitimately uh, there where they are in their position of power. And they will always abstain from any responsibility. So, uh, say, the head of state or the head of the WHO, they go to people and say, you must vaccine. If you don't vaccine, you lose your job and so forth. Right. Three years later, it comes out that the vaccines have been uh, have huge side effects. And then they say, well, we we said that based on the medical evidence at that time. Right. None of the, these people has ever apologized. None. When asked what he's investing in right now, Faber says he's got a bit of everything, real estate, stocks, bonds, cash, and of course, precious metals. Though not advisable to be kept for too long because of currency debasement, cash is still very important for short-term expenses. And for people like Faber, cash is important to escape the constant monitoring from the government. That's why the fund manager is also against CBCs. He aptly describes central bank-controlled digital assets as heavenly gifts that would allow central bankers to do what they love best, print as much money as they want. During his discussion with Wall Street Silver, Faber also discusses his views on the constant manipulation of gold and why central banks are loading up on the yellow metal in record numbers. Well, I right? always have the same allocation, real estate, stocks, bonds, uh, cash, and of course, precious metals. And so the precious metals as a percent of total assets has done well and has increased in value. But it's not that when I see that gold goes up that I would sell all my stocks and sell all my bonds and cash and put it all into gold. I may increase the position in precious metals, but uh, uh, I have already a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I feel it's uh, it's better not to overdo things because right. we don't know what uh, the problem is. You and I can analyze the gold market or the silver market or platinum, but you and I, we don't know what the government will do next. They can ask people to do it for them, like they can ask uh, some banks to kind of manipulate the price, uh, which they've done. I have friends who seem to know that they have, that the prices have been manipulated. Doesn't help in the long run on the country. In the long run, manipulation breaks and then prices move strongly. And we may be at this point at the present time where maybe precious metals have a good move. But I'm not going to increase the position in gold and silver because I already have enough. Look, it could be 2,800 or it could be 4,000 or 6,000. I believe that this year, as they have always done, the Federal Reserve will cave in. Right. Because uh, if you analyze very carefully, once you embark on printing money, as they did in December 2008, that was the announcement by Mr. Bern ben Bernanke, another of these bureaucratic geniuses <laughs> that never has worked in a business in his life, has no business experience, has never conversed with ordinary people on the street. He's a academic moron. <laughs> you understand? He's uh -huh. went to fine universities and read some books and so forth. Most of them uh, he didn't read. He didn't read the classical economies. And if he read them, he didn't understand them. Central banks are buying more gold now that they have in the past 55 years. Uh, are they preparing for something big, possibly full-on uh, de-dollarization? Well, this is a good point. The last time they bought the kind of quantity of gold they're buying now is in the late 50s and 60s, which preceded 
the 1971 closure of the gold window in America in August 71. Right. And uh, following that, the gold price went ballistic. So I would take this as an important signal, but I would also take this as an important signal that finally, I mean, it's difficult to, to believe that governments would smarten up, but governments in India and in uh, Russia and in China and in Brazil and so forth, they have second thoughts about holding all their money, their monetary reserves in dollars, because they saw how the U.S. essentially froze the assets of the poor Afghani people, who are, mm -hmm. some of them are starving. But the U.S., they go and give conferences about human rights. At the same time, they let the uh, Afghani people starve. That wow. is the hypocrisy of America. Talk big and do the worst kind of things onto the world. According to Faber, a critical look at the damage being caused to cities in the United States will reveal why investing in real estate, especially in U.S. cities, is not a great idea. With the Fed's anti-inflation crusade, stocks and bonds are also not particularly appealing. This leaves investors with precious metals, which coincidentally, central banks have been loading up on in record numbers within the past year. If all proceeds as expected, Faber believes gold is adequately primed for some strong upside moves in 2023 and beyond. What are your thoughts on Faber's interview? Do you think gold is about to go ballistic as more economic uncertainty unfolds in the United States and the overall global economy? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.